nobody wants to be an obstacle to their success. Despite the great intention, much of the obstacles you encounter are your own creation. You created them without knowing. You know why? Because much of your thought process is done unconsciously. Have you thought about that? Do you sometimes feel you're stuck? Stuck and enclosed in a sort of a cage that you don't know what to do? Well, uncage yourself. This is your ultimate guide. The book is intended to help you interrogate your self-limiting habits and beliefs that hinder your growth and prevents you from achieving your potential. Break free from the self-made cages and prisons. Written in simple yet thought-provoking way, this book aims to help you unlock your next level in your health, wealth and relationships. Get yourself a copy today. Nobody wants to be an obstacle to their success. Despite the great intention, much of the obstacles you encounter are your own creation. You created them without knowing. You know why? Because much of your thought process is done unconsciously. Have you thought about that? Do you sometimes feel you're stuck? Stuck and enclosed in a sort of a cage that you don't know what to do? Well, Uncage yourself. This is your ultimate guide. The book is intended to help you interrogate your self-limiting habits and beliefs that hinder your growth and prevents you from achieving your potential. Break free from the self-made cages and prisons. Written in simple yet thought-provoking way, this book aims to help you unlock your next level in your health, wealth and relationships. Get yourself a copy today. Nobody wants to. Well, good morning and welcome to the broadcast. Unlike every other time, we usually bring you programs. Today is a different day altogether because we are coming to you live from the Rift Valley Innovation Center where we are commissioning or we are assisting one of us, a daughter of Baringo, to launch a book. I don't know how the number of books that is written, but uh, we are here together to get to know that and you can see from the screen that we, are, we have a book that is displayed there. The name is Uncaged and from the introduction you've heard it is the ultimate, it is your ultimate guide to uncaging yourself. Getting yourself to be free from the prisons that you've created without knowing and Winnie the author is here today to give us the journey towards coming up with this book and being your ultimate guide then the ultimate person who wrote the book is here with us. Karibu sana wini. Thank you very much. I really well, appreciate it. Uncaged writing and a swing from uh, a teaching profession to being an author. Who is Winnie? Thank you very much. Yeah. My name is Winnie Tanui. Uh -huh. I am a daughter of Baringo. Mm -hmm. Actually I've been married to Baringo County mm -hmm. so I can say I'm the among the mothers here. Uh -huh. I'm a teacher by training, a B.Ed., but I've had a long journey in my career of about 17 years since I left university. That is in around uh, 2002. So I've done other things. One of the interesting jobs I've done is being a public administrator with the government as a DO in Kitui Central. DO? Yes, in uh, Kitui Central. Oh, I, I didn't see that in you while I was doing my research. That's interesting. Uh -huh. Yes, so apart from that, I've done customer care, and then my, the last job I did was a human resource officer. Before I switched off to business, 
and then I realized that the best business I can do is the business of empowering people and that's why I write. The business of empowering people. Yes. I can imagine what sacrifice it takes to offload what is in your mind, put it in writing, have people to edit and have it published as a book. Yes. Um, you're talking about you inspiring people and helping other people to get to understand themselves. What inspires you, what inspired you to go into writing and not to continue with your teaching profession? Okay, it's a long story mm -hmm. and it's more of a personal search because mm -hmm. I've been, from the time I was a teacher, I was in a BA uh, in a University of Nairobi, mm -hmm. I always thought there's something more I need to do. And especially when I was in a class learning about psychology, mm -hmm. I, I, I really like the idea of understanding human behavior. Yeah. So I think that has been at the back of my mind. So from teaching to public administration to mm -hmm. human resource management, yeah. I've always felt there's something more, there's something more. Mm -hmm. And all this time I've just been following my heart, what we call following your heart. It led me to books. And I think from here, I want to stay here for a while. Does that mean that you managed to get yourself out of, out, out of the cage, as yes, you say? Yes, it's true. It's actually more of a personal journey also. Uh -huh. Yeah, it's borrowed from my life. Well, um, back to writing again. How has your journey been? You've, uh, I believe this is your second book yes, now that you're about to launch yeah, today. Yes. How did it start? And being there, you've had the first book. I think it was in 2019. Yes. Maybe you can give us a brief description of how your journey was because I'm sure there's someone who would want to write a book they are seated somewhere watching us here how has your journey been into yeah. writing it I, th I can tell somebody who wants to write that if you want to write just go ahead and write mm -hmm. and writing means just take a pen just offload what is in your heart mm -hmm. because it's more about the heart more than the mind yeah yeah so you just write what is in your heart what is your heart telling you get a book start writing there is no formula write and write after you've got something substantial you can now go to somebody who is ahead of you in this game and say what can i do with all these ideas i've put down so that is the simple process in book writing i, I believe it's like anything else you do in life what you want to do just start doing there's no formula oh yeah again um there are quite a number of the types of genres of books that people write. Mm. There are thrillers which can even be translated into movies oh, sometimes. Mm. What, how, how do you describe yourself as a writer? What kind of a writer are you? Okay, mine is just, I'm a personal development writer. Personal development. Yes, it's uh -huh. just about helping people be better. That really inspires me. And I like it when people tell me, give me feedback and say, what I write inspires them. That word inspire is like my guiding light. Yeah. Just helping people be better. That is what, what I would want to do. And if you look at it very well, it's not far from teaching. I'm a, uh, I'm a daughter of teachers. Mm -hmm. My parents are teachers. Mm -hmm. Recently I was with them and I was telling them, I think I'm proudly a second generation teacher. Uh -huh. As in, for us it's all about helping people. So it's just teaching, but in a different form. So it's not classroom teaching, but it's teaching you to be a better you. Well, so it, I believe I'm still a teacher anyway. I see. Yeah. Well, to the book, Uncaged. Yes. And from the introduction, you could see some part of trying to get up themselves out of a cage. Mm. Of course, their cage was created, mm -hmm. not self-created, as you, as you mm. say. Mm. Why the title, even as we go into the, 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 the book itself and the details, mm. wh why did you come up with that? name the word uncaged why did you choose that word i think uncaged is all about i think after doing a lot of research and remember this writing journey i started when i thought about i need to write i started writing in the year 2017. Mm -hmm. so i've been thinking about human behavior what uh, what somebody needs to do then i realized actually most of the cages most of the things that we find are limitations you know sometimes you think there are things outside you Actually, apparently, there are things within you. It is the, the things you create. And it is just about behavior because human is about behavior. And human, unlike any other animal, is about thinking. So by thinking, you create behavior. Yeah. And that behavior holds you captive. Sometimes you really feel like you should do something, but you feel helpless. It's a cage. And the beauty with it now, once you realize it's a cage and you put yourself, 
then you have the power. In this book I've said, for me I also realized later on that I was in a cage. I had locked myself. Mm -hmm. An interesting thing about this cage, you have the keys in your hands and you're wondering, Ntatoka VP. So it is about uncaging yourself. It, you have the power. That is the beauty. So the power is in your hands. Wow. So you've had for yourself, you have the keys to unlocking those cages that have really kept you in somewhere that you may be feeling comfortable or they're limiting you to moving from where you are to attaining your utmost potential. And talking about the keys, uh, I'm sure right now you're already asking yourself maybe what kind of cages could you be in and what kind of personality do you have that you may be leading you to the cages and before we go into that because she's here she'll be telling us about the type of types of cages that uh, we find ourselves in without knowing uh, i think it should be for you who's watching you have an opportunity of getting yourself a book and uh, there's a copy here which will be sent to you should you attain or meet a certain criteria which will be unveiling at the cause of the conversation and so keep don't, don't don't leave the stream don't forget that there's a book that will be mailed to you after this once you win it and for the questions that we'll ask and you get yourself to or rather you find yourself answering it or we get your comment to be the correct answer to the question that we'll answer uh, will ask then you would be lucky so don't get away from the stream keep watching and follow the conversation with me here winnie tanui who is the writer of the book that is going to be launched here today now you've talked about cages mm -hmm. and those which we create for ourselves mm -hmm. Can, are you able to point out some of the cages that we find ourselves in maybe even myself here i'm in a cage and i don't know <laughs> yeah so maybe we can just go to the the book uh -huh. we read uh, the chapters mm -hmm. what the cages the cages that's why i say they are hidden because they are they look ordinary mm -hmm. they are the normal things actually we don't think of them as stumbling blocks yeah. you know sometimes you might think these cages must be huge yeah. they must be big things out there but they are the small things within and that's, that's why, why i'm calling them they are the they're hidden, hidden. Barriers. how to break free from hidden barriers yes, to, success. to success so which page would you want us to go to the first uh where it's written content content yeah so a few of the cages include self-doubt uh -huh. and self-doubt is key and this one I can maybe, especially because I'm a woman, mm -hmm. I'm proudly a woman writer, mm -hmm. African writer. Mm -hmm. so, so when I think of myself as a woman, maybe, because I have the experience of being a woman, yeah. a lot of self-doubt. You're thinking, I want to do this, but you're like, what if? What will people think? Do I have the ability? Where did I come from? Like for me, I was born in a village and I've been a village girl walking without shoes. And sometimes I am asking myself, this girl who started school without shoes, can she actually be a writer, mm -hmm. big enough? Mm -hmm. I'm like, maybe, maybe not. So it, you, you can imagine it's just thinking of yourself and thinking my background might be a limiting factor. So it's giving you self-doubt. Self-doubt. So self-doubt is one of them. Yeah. The other one is the trap of constant worrying. Worrying looks like a simple thing. Mm -hmm. uh, I remember... I can see. I can mention a story. I think my father-in-law was in my house a few times, a few weeks ago. Mm -hmm. So as we were writing the book and getting copies to edit, I gave him the book, and he said, I, "It's interesting to know that worrying can actually be a trap." I think I don't know. It really caught his eyes yeah. because sometimes you think worrying is good because when I'm worrying, I'm trying to think of solutions. But wor what worrying does actually is that when you worry, you stop thinking about solutions. And I think uh, I'm a victim of that also. So you get stuck. Whenever we have a stream like this, when I'm engaged in a, let's say you want to start the stream live and mm. things are not working, mm. worries really keep me away from concentrating. Yes, from what I need and to when do. you concentrate, you know yeah. the worst thing about worrying and yeah. It, it's actually when you lack concentration, you don't find the best solutions. I see. So it looks simple, and many of us like worrying. And interestingly, even when we wake up in the morning, in fact, I, and then one of these interesting bits is I use myself even as an example. Mm -hmm. I think of my life and see, what would I have done better? Most people actually, interestingly, when they wake up in the morning, they think about yesterday problems. So they, it's like they replay the yesterday in today. So you're thinking, and you're waking up in the morning and you're thinking, man, comment, 
was I owe command money. What do I do? And when you worry, now you're not thinking about how do I get money. You're worrying, I, I owe command money. Yes. So at the end of the day, you are not thinking of the solution, but you're just repeating the problem. I so see. it's like you're making it bigger and bigger. So it becomes perpetual and yes, cyclic. cyclic and, and bigger. Yeah. Yeah. Well, um, do you have any other uh, type of uh, prison that we can find ourselves in? I think the other one that I really found uh, interesting mm -hmm. is called, here in chapter 9, is called the snare of undefined priorities. As in, you've never defined really what you want in life. And mm -hmm. most of us, I think, fall into this trap. And it's a problem, but maybe we didn't know, because many of us have never been in a situation or a class where we've been <laughs> told you need goals. Yeah. In life, you need goals. Without goals, you're not moving anywhere. So unless one day you really sat yourself, what we say, kujita mkutano, mm -hmm. and you said, okay, here I am. I am this, I'm a graduate, I'm 35 years old, yeah. I am a mother, I have two children, what do I want from this life? If you've never sat down with that, in such a meeting, most likely you'd, your priorities are not clear. And when you're not clear with what you want, then anything that comes in becomes your priority. Yeah. So you are open, you're just like an open stream here online. So imagine you're like an open radio station. You, are, you don't have your own what you want to channel. You are receiving everything. That wouldn't work. It will be confusion. So many of us fall into that trap. I think that, that, that resonates with the what you, when we had our first phone conversation, there's something that was very captiv captivating and actually hard to put it down. And you said you can go where you want, what you want, where you can go to where you want, be what you want, but again, it starts with, with you, yourself. Where are you going? That's the question. And there's been a very trendy issue that has been moving online, and everybody has been saying um, happiness and even being orderly in what you're doing is an inside job. Yes, and I know many people have accused motivational <laughs> speakers of liking the word inside job. It looks like a cliche. Yeah, yeah that we like motivational speaker like inside job, inside job. Yeah. But for sure it's about where you're going. Imagine you woke up in the morning. Mm -hmm. We are here in Aldama Ravine. You've gone to the stage. At the stage of Aldama Ravine, there are vehicles going to Nairobi, going to Eldoret, Cabernet, wherever. Imagine you've not decided where you're going. So what happens when you are at the stage? You don't know which matatu mm -hmm. to actually hope in. Yeah. So that what happens in when you've not defined your priorities. So it is very, very critical. Define where you're going. Then it becomes easier. You know, if I'm going to Cabernet, you just go and hope into a matatu going to Cabernet, or mm -hmm. you can take a boda boda to Cabernet. It's clear that you have a destination. Yeah. And in life, you actually need a destination. It will look like, how do I define where I'm going? Yeah. I don't know what the future holds. But you see what? You, humans create their life. That is a beauty. God gave us ability to create our future. Yeah. And that's why you need God to work with you in the journey. But if you've not defined, mm -hmm. then even God gets confused. Where do I take you? I see. Yeah. I'm not sure if you feel what I'm feeling with regards to what she, the insights that she's giving us. And if you feel that uh, this book as a preview that has been given is speaking to you, maybe you can give us a reason, give us an ultimate reason as to why this book belongs or rather rightfully or you deserve to be given this book. We are giving it out as a gift mm -hmm. from our desks today. And if you think that uh, Winnie is speaking to you, can you write a small paragraph? Give us a good reason as to why you should be given this book. Specify where you're from. Then our team here will go through those comments, maybe the first one, and that which is convincing enough. Even the, our guest here will be able to go through some of your comments and mm -hmm. make a decision as to who deserves to be given the book. So go to the comment section, write your comment, give a reason as to why you need to, you could you need to you deserve to be given this book today, then we will get back to you and announce the winner or rather the person who deserves this book at the end of the show. And uh, b before we uh, continue, uh, while I was uh, reading the first pages of this book, there's a point which highlights that uh, there are 
there could be two types of cages. Mm -hmm. There are those that are within us mm -hmm. and there are those that are defined by the society. Mm -hmm. Would, are you able to, to take us through these two types because you know, when you're in the village, there's a way the village requires you to, to behave, to behave yeah, or to carry out yourself. Mm. And internally as well, the way I was brought up, there are things that I can't do because of how I was brought up. Mm -hmm. Maybe you can delve into that. Somebody can be able to differentiate the two and also relate. And of course, in the long run, they would want to have this book as their guide to get themselves out of that problem. Okay, yeah, yeah. thank you very much. So in this book, I've uh, defined, there's a place I read, uh, there are two types of cages. One is societal, because we live in a society, we are not isolated. Yeah. You are you, as much as you want to uncage yourself, you can only uncage yourself within the limit of the wider society. Yeah. And there's a reason why humans are in a society. A wider society is important because it gives us the comfort. In fact, as a human being, if you're actually sent away from your a society, mm -hmm. you'd find it's a very lonely place. And that's why like in the, in the African traditional society, what used to happen if somebody has misbehaved or somebody has killed somebody, what they used to do is used to be sent away from the society. Yeah. That's just enough punishment because if you are out of the social support, you're actually alone and it is very hurting. So there's the society. I'm not saying we need to to, to be rebels. I'm not encouraging rebellion, yeah. but I'm encouraging us to really re rethink because any society has advanced because of people who've been able to really think and wonder, is this culture, is this our way of life necessary in this generation that we live in? And that is why every generation have permission to rethink and think about and uh, the people who've been able to change society are people who've been able to think about what is happening and rethink of a better way of doing things simple things even just let's say even agriculture i was brought up in transoya mm -hmm. and i know many people in transoya plant maize and the people here plant even potatoes yeah interestingly people get ideas of how to plant potatoes from their fathers so you'd find what we've been using as standard way of planting potatoes is something that our grandfathers did 20 years ago yeah so sometimes it really needs us to rethink is this the best way of of planting even basic things like planting potatoes yeah. and many other behaviors. So we need to really think. But I know that is a wider debate, but I'm saying start with you. That's yeah. why in this book, I, the hours differentiating, yeah. but I, dive, I, I went forth more about personal because you have the power to change yourself more than change society. Well, so you've had it. And I think that even gives you more ideas on how well you will frame your statement so that you can stand the chance of getting yourself a free copy courtesy of uh, this desk, Baringo News. And of course, uh, where we are streaming live from, it is the Rift Valley Innovation Center. And their facilities are the ones that are enabling us to come to you live right from a remote place in Baringo County where High-speed internet is available where people are empowered to access uh, free internet and resources that can assist also in doing their research and maybe getting to break away from uh, cages. the cages <laughs> yes. of fearing of the, the fear of even reading books. Sure. And maybe I should also confess that I'm not a very good reader <laughs> and that could also be another prison for me to get myself out. Though I can uh, assure our viewers that whenever I focus, or rather I decide to go for a book, I consume it to the very end. So don't you think that I'm a poor reader and be one like me. So and let's Can I add that? Yeah. Then we've been accused as Africans <laughs> that if you want to hide anything from an African, uh -huh. hide it in a book. Uh -huh. But I think that one we need to come out of that cage. We are getting I think that, that is cage. the cage we need to come out from today. We, we are Africans, yes, but we are beginning to read. Okay. Because when we read, we get the knowledge. So okay. we are coming out of that cage. Even you, you are uncaging from that. I'm uncaging myself. Yeah. Well, um, the journey into writing this book and maybe we can go back to your, 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 your first book. Yes. Dare to be you. you. Yes. It sounds like you're addressing a person. Yes. Is this a series? Not really. But actually, looking at these books, they seem to build on one another. Because books, I think books 
knowledge, I don't know, it's like what? It's like a journey to me, writing, I, I realize it's a journey. Because mm -hmm. they built on one another. So the ideas, because even for me when I, I, I sit back and write, because it takes a while to write a book. Actually, it takes me about three years to write a book. Three years. Yes. And this is only 164 <laughs> pages. Yeah. So on average, it's like you're spending 10 days to refine a page. Oh my, okay. <laughs> I've never thought of it like that. Yeah. Yeah, because it takes a while for it to come out. And anyway, again, it's a new journey for me. I'm starting to learn how to write. I'm sure by the time now I'm writing my 15th book because mm -hmm. I'm hoping to write more, it will be much easier. Because what I do when I write, I write ideas that come to me. And most of them I said, I use the story of my life because you can, I'm just uncaging also myself. I told you from a village girl, to this girl who's done so many, pro you know, uh, in the interesting thing about my CV, mm -hmm. if I look at my CV, I have too many careers. In fact, somebody was asking me another day, what exactly to, do you do? And I was like, okay, I'm not even sure what I do myself. <laughs> so I was in that trap of undefined priorities because mm -hmm. my career journey is from education to public administration, to customer care, to training, to, to human resource management. So the journey is, so I was, I was in a trap, I realized, of undefined priorities. What do I really want? Yeah. So when I look at my life, I can actually sit and say, what would I, how would I have done it better with these ideas that I'm now getting? Because to be a writer, I have to be a reader. So for me, I read almost every day. It's yeah, like an addiction. That's manifested on your book because uh, there are quite a number of sightings that yes. you've, you've met. met yes, yeah. so I read. From I read. various sources. Yes, I yeah. read a lot. And in fact, like this year, I've been reading books that are 100 years old. I want to see Shakespeare in the 1880. What, what was going on in Shakespeare's mind? Yeah. There's a guy called, a poet called Rumi, who was in the 13th century. Mm -hmm. So I read to understand how has knowledge been, been coming along the ages, because it helps me get a base. So as I read and write, and I'm like, so what would have been the best way of handling even my career? Because for me, I believe work is critical for any person, yeah. and especially for male. If you're a man, mm -hmm. and if you're not really clear of what you do in your life, uh -huh. it affects even how you relate, sure. yes, to people. And t talking about you researching and looking at things from the perspective that you would have dealt with yes. at a personal level, mm. Are you trying to say that uh, these, these books that you write, they are a, a product of what is happening within you? Yes. Una shika mkutano with yourself. I know. Then and you give us in form of a book. Know, that is, is that what you're saying? Yes, it is. Then how, how does it feel when, when you say you spend three years in writing this book? Do you sometimes write it, Rudy Tena? You rub it, mm -hmm. edit, re yes, edit. Yes, I have so many notebooks in my house. I write, I rewrite, and after writing, after some time, I just leave it. I leave it, I can leave it for six, I leave it actually for about more than six months. I don't go back to the book. I can be writing another book because now I'm writing another book and another book. So I leave this one all alone. When I come back, I come back now reading like any reader with fresh eyes, mm -hmm. and I actually can see gaps. With, with the six months, have you ever stood at risk of losing a manuscript? Do you write it on paper? Or oh, you... yes. I write it, I used to write it on papers until I decided, because uh -huh. I lose, I have my ideas all over my house. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I go back to a drawer and I'm like, this would have been a, a good idea in a book, why mm -hmm. is it in a... So I decided to be buying notebooks so that it's easier, so I write, so that if it's an cage book, I write... So with the, with the six months, I'm looking at the risk of you losing, because we're looking at the journey here, mm. three years. Mm. Write Kidogo, leave it for six months. You've never lost some content I'm at some hoping, point. But I, I have faith that whatever comes out at the end of it is what needed to be in that book, because it's about a bit of faith. What has been your worst moment while traveling the journey of coming up with a book? My worst moment is actually, as you said, losing ideas ideas that would have been in a book uh -huh. and they've been left out. But the beauty about leaving it again is the clarity, yeah. the clarity of thought. Mm -hmm. When you leave it and come back to it, 
you come back with so much fresh eyes that you you find the book is also speaking to me now not as a writer mm -hmm. but now it's like I'm a reader and I'm reading these things and I'm like wow this is what I should have done earlier so, and because anyway the, again when I'm writing these books I'm no longer a very young lady yeah. I think this journey of writing books I've started it uh, the first book I launched when I turned 40 and there's the magic of saying life's life begins, begins at, at 40, 40. Uh -huh. I think that is a true Test testimony. I think uh, I, would I would really love to turn 40 someday and feel how life begins because <laughs> I, I don't know what kind of life we are living ourselves. Who are yet <laughs> Before <be> 40. 40. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, th th that was interesting. And uh, to you who's watching, we are, we are about to head into another phase. At some point, Winnie will have a moment to read a page of this book. I feel that will be interesting. We get to feel how the words come from her mouth and of course the thought process into herself reading what she has done. Does it bore you sometimes reading what you've written? Not really. I find it interesting. I don't know. For some strange reason. You know, with what we do uh, at Baringo News, I, I usually write a story and I find it very difficult to, to really? go back to edit. And at times you are you're, you're the writer and you're the editor. editor yeah. Now, about editing, before we go into the next phase, are there people, I'm sure there are people whom you've... Uh... Well, sorry for that technical hitch. I was being informed there was an issue that was being sorted out. We are about to go on a break. Um, sometimes you... I was giving my story, writing the, uh, the, the story and at the same time being the Editing editor. Our, yeah. It gets difficult mm -hmm, at times mm -hmm. and I would be keen to know also on your side. You've written these things, you live with them for six months. Mm -hmm. Do you find some laziness, level of laziness trying to yeah, go, to go back, back yes. to them? That's why I, I need help. Actually, this book is a, a product of help from so many people. Well, and to the bit of getting that help. We would love to have these people. I believe you've arranged with them. Yeah. We have a, a mm. link that mm. uh, your editor. Yeah. How many editors did you? I have with? some people who are proofreading for me. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. Who will come in and explain? Well, we'd love to hear that, and to the audience, you would also want to know what people who have read this book are saying about it, so that you can also get yourself a reason to really want to buy this book. And this book, it's already available. Maybe we can mention that before we go on a break. Yes, it's available on, a, there's a place called Book Launch. Book Launch. Yeah, but mm -hmm. you can also order directly through me. Yeah. And we will arrange with the, my group of the people we work with yeah. for the book to reach you. So as we go on a break, you realize that uh, this book is already out. You can pre, or you, not even pre-ordering, you can actually order. buy. There's buy a it. number that is running at the bottom of your screen. It is uh, 0745. Uh, 353526, that's the phone number that you can contact to get yourself a copy. And I believe uh, it's not you who's picking that call yeah. because uh, <laughs> people are listening right now and yeah. they would want to make a call or even text to make an order. So we go on a break. When we come back, we would be listening to the people who have proofread this book and they would have an opinion to it and also they would give an insight. There are those who have read even the first book and mm. they are giving an opinion on, or a review on this new book, Uncaged. And uh, in the, after the break as well, we would be having her to read her section of the book. Mm. Then we would be heading to the tail end of our conversation. See you after the break. Nobody wants to be an obstacle to their success. Despite the great intention, much of the obstacles you encounter are your own creation. You created them without knowing. You know why? Because much of your thought process is done unconsciously. Have you thought about that? Do you sometimes feel you're stuck? Stuck and enclosed in a sort of a cage that you don't know what to do? Well, uncage yourself. This is your ultimate guide. The book is intended to help you interrogate your self-limiting habits and beliefs that hinder your growth and prevents you from achieving your potential. Break free from the self-made cages and prisons. Written in simple, 
yet thought-provoking way. This book aims to help you unlock your next level in your health, wealth, and relationships. Get yourself a copy today. Nobody wants to be an obstacle to their success. Despite the great intention, much of the obstacles you encounter are your own creation. You created them without knowing. You know why? Because much of your thought process is done unconsciously. Have you thought about that? Do you sometimes feel you're stuck? Stuck and enclosed in a sort of a cage that you don't know what to do? Well, and cage yourself. This is your ultimate guide. The book is intended to help you interrogate your self-limiting habits and beliefs that hinder your growth and prevents you from achieving your potential. Break free from the self-made cages and prisons. Written in simple yet thought-provoking way, this book aims to help you unlock your next level in your health, wealth and relationships. Get yourself a copy today. Nobody wants to be an obstacle to their success. Despite the great intention, much of the obstacles you encounter are your own creation. You created them without knowing. You know why? Because much of your thought process is done unconsciously. Have you thought about that? Do you sometimes feel you're stuck? Stuck and enclosed in a sort of a cage that you don't know what to do? Well and cage yourself. This is your ultimate guide. The book is intended to help you interrogate your self-limiting habits and beliefs that hinder your growth and prevents you from achieving your potential. Break free from the self-made cages and prisons. Written in simple yet thought-provoking way, this book aims to help you unlock your next level in your health, wealth and relationships. Get yourself a copy today. Nobody wants to be an obstacle.
fans and audience. Welcome back and sorry for keeping you for the break. I hope you did not uh, leave the stream because uh, three things are going to happen after this or rather uh, during this break that we've come from. A book will be given out. Our guests will have a chance to read the book. Our audience who are here with us today also will give their views on the book because we are in the presence of, we have an audience with us here. And finally, we'll also have to get reviews or views from the people who have read this book. Those who proofread the book, those who helped in editing the book and even maybe adding a few ideas or superimposing some of the points that may not have been clear from the onset. So don't you leave the stream. Now, to you, um, Winnie. Yes. It's your chance to read a chapter or a section of the chapter of this book. I don't know where you'll be heading to. Maybe you can also yeah. direct me there so that I can follow as you read. Thank you very much. So I think uh, I'm actually, it is a challenge for me to decide which one is actually that punchline because I think, I believe everything here is punch word. Uh -huh. So I'll go from to chapter two. Chapter two. Chapter two, the beginning says, you are your habits. You, ha you are your habits. It starts with a quote and says, we are what we repeatedly do. Excellence then is not an act, but a habit. That is by Aristotle. So most of the things each individual does in a day are as, are as, are as, are as a result of programmed physical and mental routine. For example, you wake up, brush your teeth, take a shower, and do many things in the same sequence every day. The routine is in your mind and you faithfully follow it without thinking about why you do that each passing day. The routine is what forms a habit. So that is what we call a habit. Mm -hmm. Any slight deviation from the normal routine or interruptions of one habit leaves one disoriented. Habits are the building blocks of success or failure. Yet despite the importance of habits, few people know how they function as individuals and what drives them. This applies to all areas of a person's life, including relationship, personal development or lack of it, social habits, and every other aspect that is unique in an individual. An American, in an American Journal of Psychology defines a habit as more or less a fixed way of thinking, willing or feeling acquired through previous repetition of mental experience. A habit is said to be a redundant set of automatic and conscious thought and behavior and emotions that are acquired through frequent repetition. Once a habit has been formed, your body seems to have acquired a mind of its own and it can do a task without involving the conscious part of the brain. And this is what is referred to being in autopilot. So, can I continue? Um, do you feel <laughs> I guess it being is. The, being the punch. Yeah, it starts because it starts by why, why we say you are on autopilot is you've repeated things, so you wake up and do things that you don't question. Yeah. So, in this book, we are trying to help you to question your autopilot mode. Why do I do this? Should it be the best way of doing? So, everything that we are saying here in Uncage is questioning your autopilot mode of living. living. Yeah the things you are used to doing. Yeah. When somebody tells you something, why do you get even annoyed? For example, when you're walking, in, when you're walking like when you walk in Nairobi, yeah. there are so many people in Nairobi, everybody seems to be in some hurry of some sort. I don't know where they usually go, yeah. but everybody, so imagine when you're walking in the street mm -hmm. and somebody brushes you, what happens? You automatically get hungry. Yeah. And it seems normal, you should be hungry, but have you ever asked yourself, why are you getting hungry? Why? Why are you annoyed? Because you're thinking, Because the question you would find, if you ask yourself why, you'd be realizing, in your mind, so the mm. question is not, the mm. question is, why is he hating on me? Why would somebody want to just hit me? Does he think, no, especially if you're a woman, you get so annoyed, you're like, because he's a man, he's knocking me. But if you look further down, you'd realize that might not actually be the cause. But suppose you met somebody and they explained to you, oh, I'm sorry, I was running to hospital. I have a sick daughter in hospital. What happens? The anger just goes down. Goes down. Yeah. So sometimes you realize, even in things that you make you hungry, mm -hmm. the question of why you are hungry is not really why. 
the question is what you're thinking. You're thinking, why is somebody hating on me? And especially the word, and it is very common in yeah. our lingo, daily lingo. Yeah. Even in Kalenjin, we say, Ngasasa. Why? Yeah. So, where are you getting this idea that I'm a kudharau? Because Anje Kwambia, he hasn't told me, by the way, come in, I hate you, that's why I'm knocking you. No, you've just thought about it, you've acted on it. Yeah. So, when you interrogate your behavior, you realize what you think is not what is there, there's something more. And I think uh, that really um, brings about how, how, we are, how we are neat. I think we are, we are made to see <laughs> the other side of things, yeah. not the positive the posi side. Yeah, yeah. So there's things. only one side. Yeah. And usually the one side is not... And even in the very... Bible, I think it, it, it really dwells a lot on bringing the positive thoughts and actions mm. out of us, which means from the onset, human beings have, have a problem of seeing the negatives or even going towards the wrong side mm -hmm. of things. Mm. Well, you've read a bit of uh, chapter two and uh, you've heard how captivating it is. And moving forward, you'll notice that uh, as you continue to read this book, it helps you to interrogate yourself. Beyond in interrogating yourself, you get to be given a possible solution. Mm -hmm. And I think that, that, that's a unique part about this book, which um, Madame Winnie says that it is a personal development kind of a book. Mm -hmm. Beside helping you to realize who you are and what is inside you with regards to cage, the cages that you are in, you get to have a possible solution, mm -hmm. a way out. Yes. And like just preaching to you, getting you to a level that of realization mm -hmm. and leaving you there. Yeah, yeah, you feel high, your left is called high and dry. And you get yourself into a situation which is a risk. Mm. You can fall down and mm. never to recover. Sure. So this one gives you an opinion or a possible solution which mm. is well researched. Mm. I can see quite a number of uh, citations, books dating as far as uh, the 20 the 19th century, the 18th century, as you mm -hmm. said, you're mm -hmm. read, read, reading even books that are, were written hundreds of years ago, mm -hmm. which I feel Winnie is doing us a favor by going into the darkest places and picking the best of what we need to consume. Um, our technical team, do we have someone ready to join the, the live stream? Well, uh, the people who have uh, read this book, who have assisted uh, Winnie to write this book, they are yet to, to join us. Maybe we can just continue. And uh, let me, we can go through a few comments that, that have come through uh, on, on our social media platforms. And uh, to you who has taken time to give your thought or your opinion or to justify whether this book deserves to be given to you, we shall be able to give uh, a verdict before the end of the conversation. But, but first, let's have a look at uh, a few of your comments. Um, does anyone have uh, pre-prepared comments, maybe you can hand them over to me so that we can go through them. Mm -hmm. And in the meantime, to our audience who are here with us today, maybe if there's something that you would feel you would want to share with the, with the audience who have joined us remotely, maybe you can put your thoughts, that your thought process uh, together. Um, someone is ready to join? So as we wait for Audience. For the for the audience to to be given the microphone, maybe I can read out a few comments that have uh, come across. I can see Harold Rotich. You're asking how much would the book be? Oh, maybe you can sorry. answer that. Oh, the book is twelve hundred shillings. A thousand two hundred. Yeah, shillings. thousand two hundred. So it's it's not much. It's just ten dollars. Yes. Yeah, that? around ten. Yeah, ten dollars. Yeah. So we put it in uh, USD so that we don't find it to be a bit expensive. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we had to it's do it in Kenya shillings. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, Janet Huawire, she's saying congratulations. Thank you. Uh, Rose Chepkwej, congrats, Winnie. Um, Zach Kano, you're saying congratulations, uh, good work. Thank you. Um, 
Ahura Alex, you're saying all the best, Madam Winnie, Thank you. in pursuing your dreams. I'll be reading more of your comments as we go by, but in the meantime, let's get to hear from what one of our audience has to say. Thank you. <coughs> Karibu sana. What's your name? Uh, my name is Emmanuel. Emmanuel. Yeah. Just Emmanuel? Um, Emmanuel Kimboy. Uh -huh. uh, a student in Moi University. Well, what brings you here today? Uh -huh. uh, and from the day we have uh, come from the word uncaged, uh -huh. that is when we come to at least hear from Hamon what this thing means actually to uncage mm -hmm. oneself. And now that you've heard her speak about this book, what can you say about the book? I'm sure you have something to say. Yeah, actually, from what we have heard uh, speaking to us. It's actually inspired us that we have the many things that is uh, undermining us from pursuing what we have in life. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the things uh, I've heard from her is that that is one of the things that is making us not to proceed with success in life. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that is something uh, many, many people uh, doubt themselves of doing something. Mm -hmm. And our sister has actually impress us by telling us this thing can be unlocked by oneself. It is not a matter that somebody from outside can come to unlock their mm -hmm. success, mm -hmm. but you yourself, you have to keep on yourself. Thank well, you. Well, before, before you go and sit, uh, what do you study at the Mo University? Uh, I study education you st as a teacher. Uh, Thank which you. subjects would you be taking? I'm taking my skills. Math and chemistry. Now, looking at what you're doing in school and what you've learned from this book, and let me believe that you'll spare a few of your help money to buy this book. What is your takeaway, aside from learning that doubts would hinder you from proceeding to achieving your success? What is that specific thing that you are picking and relating to what you're doing right now? From the major comments, uh, major themes that I was isolated from the book and get, uh, I personally, as I'm in the university level, I've learned that many things like uh, undividing priorities of oneself uh, to pursue the career you are is what is in that has to, and doubting that you are not actually a teacher. You know, you have to believe yourself that you are a teacher. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, and we hope uh, you will spare a few coins from... I was seeing Babu Wino, the, the, the MP for the youth, was saying that the money has been disbursed. Let me believe that uh, you will spare that money to buy this book. It only goes for 1,200 Kenya shillings. Do we have a lady from the audience? So I will balance the gender. You still have something to add? Maybe? It looks like I'm uh, locking you out. It's just to thank the, our sister for empowering us right here to home and I urge my fellow colleagues uh, to support and to cheer, to cheer up and get what is inside that book. I'm eager to read that book to know what is inside it. Thank Great. You. Thank, you. Thank you. Well, uh, if we have a lady, we don't have a lady mm -hmm. for now. Okay, maybe they are, they are warming up mm -hmm. because I can see quite a number of them there. When the camera will be turned, you will get to see them. From the feedback we are getting from one of our audience, she's referring to you so much as our sister. <laughs> what kind of relationship have you built with these people? Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> that is, <laughs> that's a hot one. <laughs> For me, I look at the people here because this is the place I've been married to. Mm -hmm. So I, I feel I am the mothers around here. Yeah. yeah so I look at them as... Uh, sons and daughters especially the young people and mm -hmm. as i told you i think i qualify now to be among the seniors so I, yeah. I look at them as sons and daughters and actually aim sometimes we have forums where we talk with them just to encourage them and inspire them because we want them to be uncaged yeah yeah just pursue their dreams there's so much this country is full of opportunities actually if you look at it if you look at this country, there are a lot of opportunities. Why are there opportunities? Because there are many problems. Where there are many, every problem is Has actually a seed. And it 
it has, gets a solution. It's a solution. So it means you just need to identify a problem, yeah. work on it, yeah. find a solution, and you, the opportunity. So that is the beauty of the stage we are in. So when, when we see young people, especially for me, when I see people who are in their 20s, yeah. I see people who are growing up in a very good time. I mean, where you're living in a village and there's internet. I mean, some of us, we, when we were young, you, you had to write a letter to yeah. a friend. Yeah. Now there's internet. I mean, the world just came where you were. That means you just need to tap. So I see young people as privileged. Yeah, and you're living in the best of times. I would encourage you to continue keeping touch with the society. That, that's a, a clear proof that you have touch with the people mm -hmm. around. Because for him, I think could be between 20 and 25 years yeah. old. Yeah. And if you have touch with such people, then it means you have touch with the society. Okay. So keep doing that. And even for, I think it's also a challenge for some of us. Mm. Some people are turning out to be strangers in their own village. Mm. So if the village is celebrating you, and this is where we are launching the book today, then it means you have touch with them. Um, I'm not sure if we've managed to get someone on board. If, if there's been a challenge, I think uh, there's, there's a book review which has been written by one of the people. I can, I yeah, can, can, read, yeah. I can read that. Um, part of the book, uh, there's someone called um, Monica Wangeshi. Yeah. She's giving her thoughts about the book. And she's saying, after reading Dare to Be You, Dare Be You, Greatness mm -hmm. Awaits. That was your first book, right? Yes. I knew Winnie was... I knew Winnie's book would definitely be a bombshell. And K is exactly that. So it's a bombshell. Yeah. <laughs> this, this is a book that will inspire and start to... Sh this is a book that will inspire and stir you to shift your mind and shift your mindset from an imaginary self-limiting cage and from an average mediocre mentality her tenets of wisdom shared here will make you to break free and take you through a journey to enable you to do great exploits and according to your will enable you to do great exploits according to your God-given potential. Mm -hmm. That is Monica Wangeshi. She's a finance and investment professional. Mm -hmm. um, not sure if there's another one here. Let me read from uh, Job, who was supposed to join us. And Cage is a practical masterpiece in self-liberation. It offers a self-unchaining menu that, it devoids, that is devoid of high-sounding positive affirmations that take the reader to a world of fantasy and false freedom. This is a well-researched piece of art from an accomplished and budding coach and a mentor. People who seek to unfurt and fetter themselves from self-imprisonment will find an invaluable and expansive gold mine in an cage. So you'll get an expansive gold mine should you read this book. That is an opinion from Job Tabakori. And he continues, he continues to say that uh, instead of laying the blame on some enemy out there, Winnie places the back where it rightfully belongs. The inmates the inmates' thoughts, feelings, and actions, that is what keeps you away or rather bars you from going on with your journey to your success. This is a fulfilling read that is not limited to age, race, or status in life. And that brings me back to asking you who your audience target you. is. But we will get back to that. Let me finish. It is a buffet with enough serving for everyone. Breathe and, and suffocate yourself as you savour the world in each page and chapter and shake yourself and let us meet yonder in the land of free or in the land of the free you have been you have been given the keys open your prison doors that is the feedback or the review from Joab Tabakori is a teacher, an author, and an editor. I believe he's one of the people who touched yeah. this book before it went to the print. Yes, please. Well, so those are the feedback we would have gotten from uh, the people from the remote uh, platform that is uh, Google Meet. We were supposed to use that, but 
it looks like the technical challenges that we were facing here earlier are also facing them. You notice that we started the show a bit late. We were supposed to start at around 9.30, but it took us another one hour, 30 minutes to get ourselves started. I'm seeing uh, the microphone is being set up. Is there someone who would be giving feedback before we continue? Any other person? No. So now to the audience, whom are you targeting with this book? Yeah, there's an audience I'm targeting. Yeah. And I would like to call them, there are three, four words I like to use. Uh -huh. And especially this book <clears throat> is helping the area of work. Because yeah. I believe once you've engaged yourself in the area of work mm -hmm. and you truly know what you need to do with your life, as in you wake up every morning and you're sure that I'm doing what I need to do, yeah. it actually it jump starts you. You are in the right path. It's easier to deal with the relationship. It's easier to deal with money if the career and the work is right. So I'm writing this audience for anybody who's never been hired and is looking to be hired. You've been in a place where you're looking for work, you can't find work. We will help you interrogate what you need to do to be hired. There's another audience. These are people who are around 30 something years of age. These are people who've done everything by the book. They've gone to school, they've done what they were told. Ukisoma, you'll get a nice job. They've done that, gone to university, they've been hired, but I'm, at some point they are feeling tired. They are like, this is this what I want to do until I'm 60? So you're just tired with what you do. Actually, it is good to question the tiredness. So if you're tired, or if you've just been fired, because being fired means you're not offering your very best. And it's not a bad thing. It just tells you probably you are in the wrong path. And it's about time to rethink your priorities. So if you've never been hired, if you're tired, if you've been fired, and if you've retired and you don't feel tired. So if you've been fired, you if don't you've retired, you you don't feel tired, yeah. then or you've never been hired. Or you've never been hired, yes. then you are the target audience. Yes. Practically, if you've never been hired, it means it is us the youth who may be out of college mm. and we are looking for jobs. jobs so you are the immediate target audience. Mm -hmm. So you are a the best candidate for this book mm. if you've also been hired and maybe you're not tired in your job mm. or you're tired, tired yeah. and you need something to inspire mm. or even help you improve your productivity then this is something you need mm -hmm. to or rather this is your guide mm -hmm. to having a better you mm. at your workplace and mm -hmm. if you retired as well mm? doesn't mean that you're tired you're tired so yeah. you need to get to discover yourself Again. by looking at this uh, guide and also your previous book it is your daring to be you to be you mm. so beyond work there's still a part of you until your time here on earth is, is done. determined and you have to always be busy well i was waiting for the comments let's let's read them let's read through then we see um, who deserves the book um, my colleague have you sent the comments i need the comments from the maybe we can see what people are saying and uh, i can see one which has been sent here uh, boas um are there more comments we can have a look at them there is a gentleman called uh, boas Komen. i'm not sure if this is uh, my brother i'm not very sure because names on social media are very uh, are common huh? He's saying, my name is Boaz Komen. I believe the book Uncage is timely to me. As a graduate, I tend to find myself in many cages as I try to find my niche outside university. Mm -hmm. Hence, the book Uncage is good, is a good manual to uncage myself. Thank you. Do you think she, he qualifies yes. to get the book? Yes. Well, to you, Boaz Komen. Uh, oh, there's another comment here. Okay. So I... I you guys trying to make us make give the judgment here live on on the broadcast uh so let me finish with the boss is saying uh, I, uh, the book and and cage is a good manual to me to un un uncage myself okay. i look forward to uncage congratulations winnie and hashtag uncage 
Festo Corridor. Right? It looks like you'll have to give out two books here. Okay. I couldn't agree more. When you are disconnected, when you are disconnected to you, mm -hmm. it blocks energy and it, it's energy that connects you to the entire life. Make sure. Great insights. I'm in a journey to rebuilding myself wow. and the book will be of help. Sounds like he's in a journey, sure. <laughs> well, those are the two people who have uh, gotten to give their thoughts and to justify why they need this book, these two books. For now, we can be sure that we'll give it to one person. Mm -hmm. And to you, Festo, I think it will take the grace of um, Winnie to get you another copy as you've requested. Okay. Well, um, with us here is a, is, is, is a preacher, mm -hmm. a person who ministers the word of God from around and yes. uh, I believe she's in the, is it a she or a he? A she. she is mm -hmm. in, the, in, a, in, a, in, the, in the in the midst of the audience mm -hmm. and she ministers or rather she serves with the AIC Mwachon. Yes, yes. That's your church, right? Yeah, that's my local uh, church. Yeah, I remember when we were organizing this event, you were saying that you'll come, you'll tag along your pastor. Yes. And uh, mm -hmm. from the first book, there were so many sightings of Bible verses. It yeah. looks like there's a bit of God in what you write. A lot of God. Would you want to talk about that before the <laughs> pastor comes? Yes, yes. I believe it's all about, actually it starts and ends with God. Yeah. If you don't have the right connection, with the creator who gives you the potential, then you lose. You will not be able to understand. So the book is actually anchored on the word of God all the way. So there's a lot of God in the book also. Yeah. Well, uh, and I think at this moment we will welcome the pastor to give her thoughts. She's mm. part of our audience here and mm. she will help us to relate between the good book and what you're writing. Thank you. Karibu sana. I want to thank God this afternoon because of the launching of the second book for my sister. This is John and Tanui. Uh, with me, I'm going to talk much about the first book because actually uh, I've not gone deeper to the new book, the Engage. So with the first book, there be you. Uh, it seems uh, Mrs. John was just writing to help me as a pastor because when I read that book, it really helped me with, to, with the work that I'm doing, that is pastoral work. Uh, sometimes while I was uh, doing the work uh, as a pastor, there are some of the things which made me to go down, down, but the moment I read that book, I I felt an encouragement. I felt inspired. And even uh, today, I'm never the same because of the book, uh, There Be You. Uh, I used to fear sometimes even to serve, especially the male side. But because of the book, I was really encouraged. And I find that whatever God had put in my heart, I should never fear because uh, the book, There Be You, I knew there was something in my heart that was really wanted me to serve every humanity. And that book, I thank God because it's as if it opened a door for me to know how, uh, uh, how to do some of the things I used to fear. Now I don't. So I, it's my prayer always. And I always pray for a win, my sister. If there is anybody who is an holder, I always pray for is win because he has she has really encouraged me. And I was even praying that whatever is going to write another book, let it be a book that is all also going to make me again go higher and higher. And it is really the book and and cage is really making me to come out of the African traditional, which is really a problem even in the church, mm -hmm. especially we women. There are some of the work we are being refused because we are just the women. 
But to me, I just feel we are all sons of God. There is no, in heaven, I believe there will be no women, no man. We shall just be the same. And this book has really helped me so much. So uh, I just want to uh, tell the audience, let us continue reading this book, even the upcoming book. Let us continue reading it because it will really unlock some of the things which are potential in us. Otherwise, I thank God because of this day. I've never been in a, a launching of a book. This is my first time. I really thank God so much. I'm happy. And I say, may the Lord bless us all, and may the Lord be with us. Asante, God bless you so Before much. Before you go, uh, Pastor. Yes. When, comparing it with the, with, the, with the Bible. Yes. There are books that are motivational. Where do they, these, the ideas or rather the thoughts by the breath of God in the Bible and the ideas by human beings, mm -hmm. where do they meet? What can you say about that? The, the ideas of people with that of God. It seems surely whatever our sister is right, right, right thing is really what God wants us to be. Because with the mind of God, God has got good plans for each and every person. Yeah. And when you see this book, especially the book There Be You, it really wants to, 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 to show you that really God has got a plan for you in life. And therefore, this book, when you compare with the word of God, it really matches. It is as if it is one. Well, speaking one thing. Those are the thoughts by our pastor here. So should you uh, feel that uh, you'd want to make a comparison? You've gotten the comparison from the people who have gone to study the Bible and they have an opinion about this book. They are not very far from each other. So dare to get yourself a copy and uncage yourself. Yes. So let's, let's sing it with the prayer. Thank you, Pastor. Yes. Combining these ideas from this book with a prayer, then it means you're surely going to get some, let me call it some redemption, because uh, you're combining God and good thoughts from a person who has researched. Mm -hmm. And from what the pastor is saying, oh, yeah, you're actually, you're being used by God to, to, to speak to these people. Amen. So in so many words, you're preaching to, to us. Sure, thanks. Well, let me acknowledge uh, the people who have been watching us uh, since the beginning of this broadcast. I can see Ben Mwenja. You're saying, well done, Winnie. Boaz comment, maybe before, I wouldn't uh, r repeat your comment, but congratulations for getting yourself a copy of this book. Mm. Um, Festa's career, Festo career, you're saying the intro of the book is on another level. Is I believe you're referring to that video. Thank mm. you. Um, David Maraba, you're saying good job, Winnie. Thank you. Um, Haron Rotich, how much is the book and where can I pick it up? So to you, Haron, um, I think Winnie gave that answer. The book goes at a uh, thousand. 200 shillings yeah. and you can call the phone number that is running on your screen however i can read it to you it is 0745 353526 mm -hmm. make a call place your order and with the details that you'll give it will be shipped to where you are mm -hmm. um janet wawire congratulations winnie uh zach kano mm -hmm. good job winnie thank and you. all the best thank you um Joseph Keegan, good progress, all the best. Thank you. I think these are people who have been following what you're doing and they're seeing progress in what you're doing. Thank you. Uh, pff, Josie Tanui Winnie, congratulations. Thank and you. we are proud of you. Wow. Uh, Chinere Mberu, this is so encouraging. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Winnie. Thank Those you. are co comments that we are drawing from uh, Baringo News. I'm sure there are other comments from other platforms. However, we may not be able to go through all of them. Mm -hmm. But uh, what we can only say is thank you for sticking around for the entire period that we are having this pro broadcast up to now. Now, before we conclude, you've touched about the audience. It's mm -hmm. practically anybody, anybody yeah. who is still alive on this earth. <laughs> 
and they are looking forward to a new day tomorrow. Sure. Now, to with your journey, with your experience, and also the, the professional background, mm. you do coaching. Yes. What is that thing that you'd want to tell anyone who's watching right now before we conclude? Oh, thank you. So I think uh, the last bit, uh, the last, uh, the job I do now is actually I'm a coach. Mm -hmm. I'm a certified life coach. Yeah. And I believe it goes well with the book and everything. It's about personal development, actually. That is the all lessons. I wake up every day to encourage somebody to rise up, to move from where they are to where they want to be. Because the idea that there's somewhere you want to go is enough proof that you should just go. That is the point. If anybody was looking for a sign yeah. that I need to move from where I am is what your heart is telling you enough of where you are so apart from writing I also do public speaking on yeah. the same matter of personal development just encouraging people inspiring people to move and then I do life coaching yeah. life coaching is an interesting kind of thing it is almost related to counseling mm -hmm. but in life coaching what we do as life coaches we we, we work with something like a torch yeah. We don't want to walk your journey because we don't know your journey. And nobody actually knows your journey because mm -hmm. you're unique. So we point to you light on your direction yeah. so that you can walk. So when you come to a life coach with a coach like me, we'll just come and discuss what do you want to do yeah. and then help you figure out how you go there. So some, most of us need cheerleaders. And you know, life coaching stems from coaching of sports. And you'll tell you, people here run and nobody can win a gold medal without a coach. Yeah. Nobody wakes up, runs in the village and then goes to Berlin to win. You need a coach. So that is the same. Do you want to achieve something? Do you want to move somewhere? You want to be a writer? Do you want to move from being just level where you are to be a leader? A life coach helps you so that they can coach you to bring out what is in you. Wow. So that is all about life coaching. That's what I do on a day-to-day -day basis. That was something I was to ask in the end, and I think you've really delved into it. And from after listening to what this book is all about, my feeling is uh, these books are a byproduct of what you do. Yes. Initially, you're saying that you were wondering, you, were, you didn't know what to really do and you are citing your CV being spread all over. Yeah. Education, administration, HR, customer care representative, mm -hmm. and now into writing. Mm -hmm. Are you saying you've found your focus? Yes, I do. I wake up every day now feeling excited. I feel that I'm doing what God sent me because I believe everything is divine. I believe I do what God sent me to do, just help other people be the best they are. And I, I'm excited to do that every day. And... In the traditional African society, and I think it is also uh, superimposed in a Swahili proverb, Mganga Hajigangi. Mm -hmm. Did you get yourself a coach so you can discover oh, yourself? Yes. yes, somebody coached me. Somebody coached me, and interestingly, I went to a life coach and you know, he told me, what do you want to do? I told him, I'd like to inspire people. Mm -hmm. I'd like to, he told me, have you heard yourself talking about inspiring almost six times in this conversation? Mm -hmm. So the guiding, because it's the thing that is in me. So somebody had to coach me. And when I realized, actually, uh, with the help of somebody, you can come out of a cage. Mm -hmm. I want to help others to uncage also. Well, that brings us to uh, the uh, conclusion of what we had for you today. It's a book that was being launched. It is Uncage. And it is your guide to breaking free from hidden barriers to your success you've had. She had to go to a coach so that she could discover herself, which means she didn't have a meeting with herself that she managed to get to discover her ability to inspire other people. So to you as well, you have an opportunity to get to be taken through this coaching um, journey. And it begins with this book, Uncage. I've got myself a copy, maybe. The next time that we are meeting, we could have a conversation about how this book has transformed a number of people. Yeah. This is just one of the many launches that uh, Winnie will be holding. Yeah. Based on our conversation, she says that she could be holding a number of them in major towns in Kenya. Mm -hmm. So look out 
on her page that is uh, Winnie Seure Tanui. Uh, Tanui. Mm. Or is it Tanui yeah, Seure? Yeah, Seure Tanui. Well, that is her page. You can check out and for us also, if we would be working with her to get, together with us, we'll be able to inform you of when next and how soon the next launch would be coming about. So until another time. Oh, I'm being reminded that we've not cut the ribbon to yeah. signify an official launch now that we have about uh, quite a number of people have been watching so let, 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 let them also see it being unveiled and mm -hmm. I think uh, somebody can assist to bring us the books here then we'll have them unveiled here mm -hmm. yeah So uh, to Boaz Komen and Festas Korir, is it Festo Korir? Mm. You could, uh, you, you, you will need to find, uh, or rather to give us your address where you are, mm. then Winnie and our team will organize how the book will get to you. Mm. Yeah, so uh, the table can just come in front, mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you. Nobody wants to be an obstacle to their success. Despite the great intention, much of the obstacles you encounter are your own creation. You created them without knowing. You know why? Because much of your thought process is done unconsciously. Have you thought about that? Do you sometimes feel you're stuck? Stuck and enclosed in a sort of a cage that you don't know what to do? Well, and cage yourself. This is your ultimate guide. The book is intended to help you interrogate your self-limiting habits and beliefs that hinder your growth and prevents you from achieving your potential. Break free from the self-made cages and prisons. So, uh, to written in simple, watching yet thought-provoking way, this book like aims this, to help uh, you unlock your next level. We, had on. Mm -hmm. we have an opportunity to have these books officially is it unveiled yes. launched yeah so the ribbon is being cut and yeah. uh, here are your copies yeah so to Haron and any other person who has been asking about the books here yeah. they are yeah. place your order zero seven four five three five three five two six place your order and you'll have them availed to where you are and finally uh, would you wish to um, to subscribe to what she does online she's actually she actually maintains a blog the blog is darebu.com oh, yeah. and if you would wish to subscribe to what she does every day you can have a message do you get a message every day in the morning an inspiration mm. message not really okay once a week well you'll get an inspiration message once a week by sending a message lengo to 21360 send the message lengo it's a free sms to 21360 mm. so that you can get inspirations by winnie tanui until another time thank you and see you thank you yeah. Nobody wants to be an obstacle to their success. 
Despite the great intention, much of the obstacles you encounter are your own creation. You created them without knowing. You know why? Because much of your thought process is done unconsciously. Have you thought about that? Do you sometimes feel you're stuck? Stuck and enclosed in a sort of a cage that you don't know what to do? Well, uncage yourself. This is your ultimate guide. The book is intended to help you interrogate your self-limiting habits and beliefs that hinder your growth and prevents you from achieving your potential. Break free from the self-made cages and prisons. Written in simple yet thought-provoking way, this book aims to help you unlock your next level in your health, wealth and relationships. Get yourself a copy today.